Hi, I'm Masataka Goto from AST Japan. Thank you very much for inviting me to give a keynote here. So in this talk, I'm going to talk about intelligent music interfaces based on music signal analysis. In the title of intelligent music interfaces, intelligence can be achieved by music understanding technologies. There is automatic analysis of music signals by signal processing and machine learning. Such music understanding technologies can enrich music experiences and open up new ways of listening to music. Let me give you an example of Smart Music Kiosk. Smart Music Kiosk is based on an automatic chorus section detection method. Here, chorus sections of pop music mean the most representative uplifting sections of music. So let me show you the demo. So in this music, here is the first chorus, and here is the second chorus, and here is the third chorus. So they can be detected automatically in this display. And also, the so different level of repetitions can be represented by green lines. So this introduction is repeated here. As the ending, right? So that kind of music analysis was achieved yeah, many years ago in this work. And you know, such intelligent music listening interface is very useful for trial listening because you can just listen to chorus sections and also it could enable people to directly access their favorite part while viewing a visual representation of the music structure. So that was yeah, what I achieved you know, 16 years ago on this smart music kiosk. So in this talk, I'm going to focus on our recent challenge of deploying such research-level intelligent music interfaces as public web services and platforms that enrich music experiences. So let me start with beat tracking. So this was the you know, beat tracking paper I wrote uh, 25 years ago in 1994. So that was the you know, very first beat tracking paper for pop music, right? Audio signals of pop music. So this system was able to detect beat positions and also downbeat positions. So let me show you the demo. So here, green flash represents the beginning of bar, right? So this looks very old-fashioned because it was 25 years ago. So that was the very first Beat tracking system in the world, and it can detect, you know, beat positions or, or that type of music with by detecting drum patterns, and also it can detect beats in this type of music. So by detecting chord changes, then it can detect the beginning of bars, like green lines. So 25 years ago, the main challenge was to deal with ambiguities in beat interpretations. I therefore developed a multi-agent system to track beats. So this is visualization of the inside of the beat tracking system 25 years ago. So each character you know, represents different interpretation of beat positions. So as, as you see here, so there are some ambiguities in the beat interpretations, but the system tries to find the best beat, position, beat interpretation with green lines, right? So in that way, the system, so I try to make the system robust to, you know, different situations in different music, type of music. So that was, you know, beat tracking system 25 years ago, but the when I was working on beat tracking, so, you know, in 1990s, and then people sometimes asked me why beat tracking is important. Why music audio analysis, so music signal analysis is important. Now it's so obvious for us, right? So beat tracking is so important for our research field. But, the, you know, in 90s, it was not like the case. Because, you know, when I started music analysis in 1992, Personal computers couldn't obtain audio signals from com uh, compact discs. We needed a special, very expensive special hardware just to rip audio from compact discs, right? So it was like that. 
And also, we had to wait many, many hours just to get the FFT spectrogram, Fourier spectrogram, right? So it, it's like uh, deep learning nowadays, but uh, 25 years ago, so we need many hours just to get the spectrogram of the audio. So it was like, uh, at that time, so people couldn't believe that, you know, that kind of music analysis is really useful. So then I started thinking how we can enrich music experiences by such music signal analysis and developed music interfaces and applications. I therefore made this kind of demonstration application for automatic dance generation. So it's bit-driven real-time computer graphics. So at the beginning, so it has question mark because it couldn't recognize beats, but the, as soon as it recognized down beats, then it can start dancing in this way, right? So this was the very first beat tracking and very first automatic dance generation in the, in the history of the you know, music information retriever. And also, I try to control, you know, writing devices, then... So I... But the, I didn't have writing devices, so I wanted to change writing devices in this virtual environment, then... Yeah, it, it's coming quite soon. So in that way, I show that, you know, writing could be also changed automatically based on the music analysis and beat tracking. So it was fun. Then... So I realized that, you know, this was a really great approach for, to show the, to convince the people that, you know, beat tracking is really useful for the future, right? But, yeah, but at that time, so it was so computationally intensive, so I needed to use a parallel computer consisting of 60, 64 processors, right? It's a really huge computer, and I programmed that huge computer just for beat tracking. So that's the reason why people thought it was crazy, right? Because, you know, <laughs> so it's not like laptop, right? It's a very huge computer I needed just for real-time bit tracking. But now, now, as you know, so bit tracking is everywhere. So in that way, so I was working on bit tracking, and then I made, uh, to convince people, to show how technology can be used. So we developed demonstration system and interfaces, right? So I'm going to talk about this kind of research approach again and again in this talk. So let me give you another example. So this is chorus section detection method, and it's kind of you know automatic music structure analysis. It's really popular nowadays. But at that time, I made an interface on top of that to convince people that you know that kind of structure analysis is useful for for the general public. So this is the same demo I showed, and I am going to explain more details. So as you see here, here is the chorus section. But as you listen, so the pitch is different, right? So even after the transposition, so that should be detected as a repetition. So that's one of the technical challenges I saw. And also, here's yet another example. So here's the first chorus. And please listen to the background, I mean, accompaniment. Here's the second one. And here's the third one. So as you listen, accompaniments are so different, but it does should be detected as a repetition. So that, that was a technical challenge, yeah, at that time. So in that way, so we made a, you know, interface on top of music analysis. So then, so we could show how technologies can be used for general, the general public and also outside of music analysis community. So then we, so we made many, many, more than 10 different interfaces along this line. It was good, and then when we presented those kind of interfaces at international conferences like this, so people could enjoy, and we also could enjoy. However, it was not so easy to deploy, you know, to you know, let in the end user use our technologies, right? It, it's not so easy, because we are not company, right? We are just researcher. So it's not so easy for, to, you know, ask people to use our technologies in, the, in daily life. So the, our next challenge was to move from such research-level interfaces to public web services. Right? So then so we developed a web service called Songo. So Songo is a web service for active music listening based on music understanding technologies. Here the research question is, how can we exploit the potential of digital content? So to answer this question, we made songo.jp. Right? So this is open to the public. Anyone can use for free. So 
This allows end users to enjoy pop music on the web by using our music understanding technologies. So if you go to this song.jp, then you can see this kind of visualization together with music. So here we use our automatic music understanding technologies to estimate four major types of musical elements. From the top, here is the music structure that is the same with the smart music kiosk, and also here is the chord progression, right? The harmony of the music, and here is the melody line, and at the, at the bottom, here is the beat structure, so it represents you know, beat positions and downbeat positions. So let me show you this, yeah, this with the audio representation. So here you can listen to uh, metronome clicks like boop, 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 like one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, like this. And these are called the progression. So here is the melody line. So in that way, anyone can you know, listen to music with that kind of music map. Right? So that's Songo. And also it has the, all, all the functions of Smart Music Kiosk I developed many, 16 years ago. So if you click the you know, chorus section, then you can listen to this chorus section. So this is quite useful for trial listening, right? If you, if you listen to the chorus section and if you like it, then you can listen to the whole piece of music. So in that way, now so your, our interface is used by anyone in the world. So it is really great for us, and also hope to you know, let the general public enjoy our interface. And in that way, we have already analyzed more than 1.7 million songs, musical pieces on the web. So we analyze you know, many, many pieces on video sharing services like YouTube or audio sharing services. And here the point is that the, you know, we do not stream any audio. So the user's browser plays back music streamed directly from the original website. So, so if original music disappears, you couldn't listen to that anymore. So that's the mechanism behind of, you know, this song web service. And also if we use automatic analysis of you know, music content, there will be sometimes errors, right? So, but if, if end users find some errors, they can correct them in this quite easily in this way. So they can just change the you know, chorus position and also change the duration. And if it, they save this, then you know, they store this, then that can be shared by all other users. So if you correct some errors, then some other users could enjoy this piece with you know, correct annotations. So in that way, end users, end users can correct estimation errors and share to immediately improve the user experience. So this was one of the earliest example for crowdsourcing for music annotations. Right? So that's songo.jp and it's available for anyone. So English and Japanese versions are available. So if you, I, I'm just wondering if you could try this, hopefully tonight or maybe during this weekend. Okay, so in that way, so in addition to show how technologies can be used, so we started developing a web service as a showcase, right? Then, so end users can use our technologies, and also it's good to, for the collaboration with companies because, you know, even if we publish some research articles, sometimes, you know, so companies couldn't find the real value of the, you know, appreciate the real value of that technologies, but the, if we could have that kind of showcase on the web, then, so it's easier for companies to convince, you know, to get convinced with the power of technology, then we can easily collaborate. So that, that's a yeah, good side of that kind of research approach. <laughs> so in that way, so we enable people, we enable people to directly use our technologies via web service. But the, now I'm going to talk about one step further. So we would like to uh, develop a platform so that, you know, as a Web services could be built on top of our you know, technologies. So we therefore developed Web API on top of Songo Web Service. That's Songo Widget. So this is a web-based development framework for making animation and physical devices synchronized with music. So here, our goal is to control computer graphics animation and physical devices in synchronization with music. Right? 
So let me show you an example. So this is driven by feet tracking and also if you know, so during chorus sections it has much you know much more energetic mo movement and so it depends on the music structure. And also here is yet another example for robot dancing. So you don't have to control a robot by yourself, right? Just playing back a music, then that can dance in this way. So that's the power of music signal analysis. Okay, so that's the goal of you know this you know music synchronized world. So we want to synchronize everything you know with music. So, but the, here is a problem, as you can imagine. So, music manual annotation is usually time consuming, so people have to annotate temporal positions of target events in music without music analysis. So, we needed to use automatic music analysis for that kind of rigid synchronization. And also, web driven music synchronization is usually difficult because you know, user programs cannot receive and analyze audio signals or video clips you know, streamed on YouTube, for example. So we executed you know, music understanding technologies on music video clips on the web in advance. Then so we just use the music map for real time in you know, that kind of synchronization. So that's yeah, that's the problem. So then we therefore we developed this song widget framework to make it easier to develop web-based applications with rigid music syn synchronizations. So it's quite easy to use this. You can just write down a few lines on your web page to embed this music player, then you know you can easily create this kind of web, web page yeah, with music synchronization. But the so, so the point is that the, we have already analyzed more than 1.7 million songs on the web, so you can just use you know, power of that kind of analyzed results, and the user, users can immediately choose among them for any music synchronized applications. As you see here, so that's on top of Songo, right? So since we have Songo web service already, so then we could have that kind of API, you know, for, for music synchronization. So it's quite easy to program with this framework because it's based on event-driven architectures. So programmers can just write a small JavaScript co code for each event, like B, right? Then once, so if the playback position reaches to that event, then your JavaScript code is, can be executed at that event. So in that way, so programmers do not have to worry about you know, playback control. So it's really driven by you know, beat po playback positions. And also, various events are, have already been supported, like you know, musical beat, or bar line, or code change, or the beginning of you know, sections, right? So in that way, you could have music synchronized application. And also, you know, YouTube video player and our you know, song widget player are embedded in the you know, iframe sandbox and your program can communicate via our framework. So you don't have to worry about those mechanisms behind. You can just write JavaScript code to, you know, for your own purposes. So since this framework has already been open to the public, so there are many, many applications. I'm going to show three examples of them. So one of them is this Vcido Songo. Again, so if you just choose one of you know, one million pieces, then those robots can dance on the fly. So this video clip is on YouTube. So if you're interested, you can just you know type in Vcido Songo to find this video later. And also, you know, this kind of you know song widget is useful for physical controlling of the lighting devices. Like this. So those are writing devices on the floor. Then they can be controlled you know, on the basis of the you know, music analysis. So I'm really pleased to see this because you know 25 years ago, so I was I wanted to you know change writing devices, you know, but the, it was in, just in computer graphics. But those are physical devices, right? So then now it's quite easy to. Develop these kind of applications, 
And also, this is yet another application of three-dimensional computer graphics. And as you see here, the synchronization is really rigid. So every movement is synchronized with musical beats and dance beats, and also, you know, different sections of music would have different, you know, visualization. And everything is written in JavaScript and WebGL. So this is just on a web browser. So you can just type in Songrim 3D to see these kind of three-dimensional visualization for many, many pieces on the web. And this is useful just, of course, this is fun for, you know, for us to watch. But the, this is useful for even for professional live performances. So in fact, this was used in such kind of live performances in 2015 and 2018. So this was a live concert of uh, Hatsune Miku, that is a virtual singer, right? So her singing voice is, you know, based on singing synthesis technologies. So let me show you this. As you see in the back side, so that back screen is our, you know, visualization. Have you seen uh, Hatsune Miku? So Hatsune Miku is, uh, uh, you know, invented 12 years ago, and then she had a European tour last year, and then she came to London to give this kind of concert. And also, they just announced that the, she's going to have another European tour at the beginning of next year. So if you are interested in, so you can see this kind of you know, live performance. It was very, you know, amazing and futuristic. We are really pleased to see that our technologies are used in that kind of you know, live concert. And then for that kind of professional purposes, so it's necessary to have the you know, error correction, right? So in that way, so that kind of crowdsourced you know, error correction is interface was really useful to achieve high quality synchronization for professional purposes. So in that way, so Song Widget is a dynamic evolving framework that provides immediate access to up-to-date musical elements improved by end users. And now, so with this framework, so developers can easily achieve the music synchronized world. So they, they can just, you know, access to the musical elements for 1.7 million songs. And it also, it could give them a good incentive for, you know, to contribute error correction, right? Because for their purposes, they want to make it perfect. Okay, that's song widget. So this framework is also open to the public. So maybe this could be a good, good application for students to try, you know, some JavaScript programming on top of music analysis. So English and Japanese versions are available. So yeah, if you're interested, please try this. Okay, so, so far I was talking about the single device to be synchronized with music. But the next, our next challenge was to move from that single device to thousands of devices, thousands of smartphones. <laughs> so that was Songer Sync framework. So that's for a large scale web based platform for controlling various devices in synchronization with music. So that was presented at AC Multimedia last year. So here, so let me show you the video of this platform. So here is a tutorial website of Songu Sync, and you can, you can just go there and then choose your favorite music there to get the you know that kind of music synchronized animation. But the point here is that the, here is the QR code, right? So if you just scan this QR code by your smartphone, then those smartphones can be synchronized quite easily via internet. That's open platform, you know to hold that kind of large-scale music synchronization. So here the point is that you don't have to install any software on your phone, right? So you can just scan the QR code for the, you know, to get the, you know, that kind of synchronization. So this was really important because, you know, if we use this in a live concert or in a live, you know, live event, so in the main screen, so there is that kind of, you know, animation. And also you can just pro provide the audience the QR code then they can just scan to participate in this, you know, kind of joint event or joint animation. 
and this is not just for you know smartphones. You know, writing devices on the crosses or you know real writing devices can be synchronized with that kind of you know smartphones. So they all together. So this was like an experiment we had you know in our lab with one one hundred devices. Yeah, like this. So everything can be synchronized, right? That's our goal. So then, so we, after developing this framework, so this was really used in a professional live performance. So at that time, so it was like this. So such visualization was used, you know, in this, you know, 40 minute performance and more than 600 people joined, you know, by using their own smartphones. So in that way, we succeeded in sharing a bring your own device experience of music synchronized animation on their own smartphones. So it was really fun to see all those kind of, you know, experiments because, you know, in the lab, it was impossible to collect 600 smartphones in a room, but the, at that time, so yeah, it was very first time even for us to see 600 smartphones synchronized all together. And then, so since this framework is open to the public, so the goal is not to, you know, make animations for us. So the goal is to provide the API so that the, anyone can program on top of this framework quite easy. So you can just write a program code just for one single smartphone. Then, you know, that, that program can be deployed in you know, can be used by many, many, you know, more than se several hundred smartphones, right? So you don't have to worry about communications behind. Everything can be done automatically by using this Songle Sync framework. This API was invited to show at the Music Hack Day Tokyo, then it was used by many teams. And also it was used in professional live concert again, but the, at that time, so smartphones are synchronized with background music before the main show, right? So before the main show, before the main performance, people are just waiting. People, people are just, you know, looking at the social media, right? So then, so we wanted to bring this experience before the main show. Then, so people enjoyed quite a lot, you know, by using their own smartphones. And also, this is useful not just for live performances, but for some, you know, celebration or some event. So that was used in birthday event of Hatsune Miku, that, you know, virtual character. And then, so we asked many, many fans all over the world to send birthday messages to her. Then, so at the same time, period of time on August 31st, so that, that's her birthday. So then, so, so that people all over the world can connect all together to see this kind, this kind of visualization, animations. I mean. So it was great to see that you know, more than 4,000 people from all over the world participated in this, you know, this kind of birthday, virtual birthday event on the web, right? And then she had uh, another birthday last week, so, so we also <laughs> had the uh, same, same experience, uh, same, you know, experience with uh, updated animation. Then this year, so we had more than 5,000 people from all over the world to, for this, so, so it was so fun to see this. And also in the last month, we had yet another very brand new experiment, experiment with this Songle Sync framework. It was with fireworks. So it was used with fireworks in August, you know, two, years, two weeks ago. So in synchronization with fireworks, smartphones play back music and displays animations like this.
is, 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 this, is this kind of fireworks popular in your country? Or? Yeah? Okay. So it's, that's a really very huge event. Yeah. And then let me show you another scene. Yeah. But those are music synchronized, as you see here. Yeah, it was very really fun to see, you know, our technologies are used in that kind of big firework event, okay? So that, that, that's Song Sync framework, so you can just try Song Sync, yeah, just by typing Song Sync, and then here is a tutorial website, so we can easily synchronize all together. So if you have time after my talks, maybe we can synchronize all together in this room with this, you know, Song Sync framework, so we, we could try that if you're interested in. Okay, so that, in that way, so we want to synchronize everything in the world I mean, with music. That's the power of music. So then, so we made that kind of platform and API so that the people can program their own, you know, services, applications on top of our technology. This is a great tool for the collaboration with other researchers and engineers, and also it makes it easier to collaborate with companies via that kind of platform. In that way, we are going to enable people to create other technologies on top of our technologies. So that was our recent challenge of deploying research-level music interfaces as public web services and platforms that could enrich music experiences. So now you can understand this message much easier, right? So I'm going to give you another example. So here, this is the, based on the you know, melody extraction. So I made the you know, melody extraction system, I mean automatic vocal extraction, or predominant F0 fundamental frequency estimation method almost 20 years ago. So at that time, so this was the very first you know, melody extraction, or vocal extraction method in the world. So I really like to see people are using the word predominant, because you know, I know that the, I was the first person to use predominant F0, or predominant melody extraction. So since I'm not a native speaker, so 20 years ago I was at Ross and which word was good for this concept? Then I checked the dictionary again and again, then it's like uh, dominant, or well, it's like uh, uh, major F0 estimation. Mm, but then I found that the, oh, predominant F0 sounds beautiful to me. So then, <laughs> then I named that, I put that in my the title of my paper 20 years ago. But the, later on, People started using predominant F0 estimation, or predominant melody extraction. So I really like to see that happen, right? So I, I, I enjoy, yeah, in that way. So that, yeah, that was very nice for me. Yeah. But anyway, so that was, yeah, a melody extraction, yeah, like this. So that was, you know, very fast melody extraction method in the world. So this is the input, then here is the output. So this is, uh, input is monolateral audio signal, so we do not use any stereo information. But the, of course the quality is, you know, now, now, you know, quality is much, much better with deep learning, you know, based methods, but the, yeah, so it was really fun to make that kind of system 20 years ago. But at that time, so we didn't think about any applications. So we just, so I just wanted to extract melody just for fun, right? So then, but however, so as I told you, so research, yeah, you know, so research is, you know, driven by our, you know, own interest. So it's good for, just for fun, but we have to convince other people, uh, we also have to convince the general public that the, our technologies are useful for their daily lives. So then I realized that the, oh, this is useful for lyric synchronization. Then, so we detect vocal sections by using human models, and once we can get the you know, vocal signal, 
it's, it's much easier to locate each phoneme in that kind of desensitized vocal melody by using beta V alignment technique, you know, used, used in speech recognition community. So we made that kind of weak synchronization method, and then, so we wanted to make an application. Then we developed a weak synchronizer like this. So this is just like, you know, karaoke display, but it, we just use the mp3 file and text file of the rigs to synchronize them all together. So in the industry of karaoke, so they just, you know, made this kind of, you know, a karaoke display by hand, right? But this is automatic, you know. Then you can also jump to any, any words because each word is synchronized with, with music, right? Like, with singing, like this. So this is music browsing guided by the rigs. So it was useful and it was fun. So, so in that way, so we made the first made the you know, core technology, and then we made that kind of demonstration system of the you know, big synchronizer. But again, so this was just for you know conferences or just for you know research laboratories. So we wanted to move from that kind of research level interface to public web service. Then we developed a new web service called Tekisarai. That is a web service for creating rig animations based on music, human computer interaction, and live programming technologies. So here, let me talk about uh, what is rig animation. So I am going to show you an example. So as you can imagine, it's quite time consuming. It's quite difficult to make this kind of animation because you have to specify timing of each character and also you have to specify all the movements by hand right, in usual. So it's really tough to create this kind of you know video. But this is the output of our you know output of this text library service. For those of you who do not understand Japanese, I made a special video for you. So. I have a pen, I have an apple, uh, apple pen, I have a pen, I have pineapple, uh, pineapple pen, apple pen, pineapple pen, uh, pineapple, apple pen. Now you can understand what's going on, right? So, so this is really, this is really fun, right? So, but it's time consuming to create even this kind of simple video, right? So that's the reason why we made a Tikista Live service so that people, people can create this kind of lyric video quite easily. So we use automatic synchroni lyric synchronization as I explained to you. And also we use beat and time beat detection to have you know, beat synchronized animation. And also we use automatic music structure analysis, like, you know, chorus detection, right? So during chorus sections, we had much more, you know, energetic animations, you know, automatically. So here again, so we just, you can just choose, you know, one of the songs on the web, and then you can also specify the text file of the lyrics, and then they can be synchronized automatically. Afterwards, so we use our own programming language technology. It's kind of live, you know, programming technology to create, to synthesize all the animation on the fly by using JavaScript on the web browser. So that's the point. So we are not going to stream any video, right? Everything is synchronized, uh, synthesized on the fly on your web browser. That's the point. Then so we, you can easily choose different styles on the, by yourself. So this is not just automatic. So you can just choose your own styles. Yeah. Then you can, you can find your most preferable animation for your type of music, right? And also you can customize the color, or you can change the font, or sorry for Japanese, but you, you can get the concept, right? You can, just, we, you can just change everything on this web browser. And also for professional purposes, so we made a timeline editor also on, by using JavaScript on our web browser. So then, so here you can just choose some words and then you can just change, you know, different styles on the right hand side. 
So then you could have different visualization. So this is a you know, live coding environment, so live programming environment. Because you know, those templates can be program uh, programmed by yourself, right? So here, so this is you can just program code visual effects, you know, in JavaScript within that kind of video is on the on the text alive service. Then those templates templates of visual effects can be shared and open source to enhance everyone's creativity. So in that way, so this website is expanding by the power of programmers and creators. So it, it was really fun, it's really fun to see, you know, people are using our technologies in this way. And also, so on, the, on this website, it's also possible to insert illustrations in the background image. And you could have this kind of animation quite easily on this website. And also, you can also download MP4 file, video file, to, so that that can be uploaded to YouTube. This is useful for creators, right? To create this kind of music video. But this is also useful for professional live performances, again. So in 2016, so this was used in this concert. So as you see here, the background image was created by using TextArive web service. And also this was used in Hatsunemi Live concert again. So like this. I was also one of them to shake the you know, glow sticks in the live concert. And I got excited to see you know, how our technologies are used in that kind of very futuristic live concert. So it was fun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway, so in that way, so, so, okay, so also our technology was used in, also in this way. Yeah. So this is also written in JavaScript and on, on the web browser. So what's great is that if you are interested in that kind of video clip, right? So you can just dig into details. So all the you know JavaScript codes are available so, so that you can see them, right? So then you can just modify some of them to get your own you know video clip. So that's really fun to for end users and creators to contribute to that kind of collaborative music video creation. Okay, that's textarive.jp. So I'm just wondering if you could also try this, you know, maybe during this weekend or next week. So it's fun. So in that way, so it's, it's important to show how technologies can be used, right? Then so we made web service so that pe to enable people to directly use our technologies via web service. Then so we also made a platform so that the peop we could enable people to create other technologies on top of our <coughs> technologies. So all, all, all those web services are built in that way. And then also it could make it easier to collaborate with company. Then we, after that collaboration, this product came out. So it's called Relic Speaker. So you can just play back your favorite music on your phone then you can see this kind of lyric display. So this is very physical speaker like this size. So as you see, it uses uh, you know, our you know, lyric synchronization technology for some pieces of music. And also we analyze the mood of music you know, automatically. Then so they have different type of animations so that can be selected automatically on the basis of the mood analysis of music. So, so they started you know, selling this 2016, but the, as you see, so it was so expensive, and then so they made the second version with much you know, cheaper, but not cheap for me, but the, it's kind of cheaper price, yeah. So, so this leak speaker canvas, right? So it's available in European countries. So if you are interested in, yeah, you could try yeah, buying this, yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, but, so 
for buying it. They started selling this last year. Last year. So, okay, let me conclude this talk. So, in this talk, I was talking about intelligent music interfaces based on music signal analysis. And also, I showed some examples of deploying our research level music interfaces as public web services and platforms. So, those are core technologies I was talking about, right? Like beat and downbeat detection, and music structure analysis, vocal extraction, and lyric synchronization, right? So, of course, it's really important to create that kind of core technologies, but it was fun to make that kind of user interfaces and also to convince the general public. So, those kind of web services and platforms were really useful. So, let me conclude with this take home message slide. First, so let's encourage people who develop core technologies without any practical application, right? So those technologies might be too early to be used. So for example, so be tracking, right? So be tracking into 25 years ago. So there was no practical applications, right? So people yeah, was really curious why Goto is so crazy to use 64 processors just for music analysis, right? So they, they, just you know, was wondering, right? That was really interesting. But the, so that's even the case even for now, right? So even if your students or some young people started developing some core technologies without any applications, so we would like to encourage them. Maybe they might have those technologies would have some applications 20 years later. And also automatic content analysis and generation probe their real values when using interfaces. So. Interface research is important for communities and societies. And also, it's worth spending time and effort to deploy user interfaces in, in the wild. So it was not so easy for us, but the, yeah, it, it was worth spending yeah, our efforts. Because it's for fun to see you know, end users use our technologies. And also, some practical, practical applications need perfect results. So we cannot wait, wait until music analysis technologies become perfect. But the you know, error correction interfaces can promote that kind of practical applications in you know, professional purposes. Finally, so I, I'm just here just as a representative of the, this my, my team. So I couldn't make all of them just by myself. I really would like to you know, thank to my colleagues for their so you know, energetic to create those kind of technologies and having experiments and make web services yeah, together with me. So I really appreciate their efforts. That concludes my talk. Thank you.